Hey everyone, I'm the Cold Star Coder, so you want to rig this, that, and those. Unfortunately, you don't know how to do it in Blender. That's no problem. Doing it in Blender is actually pretty easy with something called bone constraints. And in this video, we're going to show you all about how to rig pistons. And what? I shouldn't keep that joke in. I should not keep that joke in. <laughs> but I'm gonna. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started and hop into Blender here. So I have a rough little model that I've thrown together just for demonstration purposes. It's pretty simple and pretty standard of what you're going to see for a rig like this. We have the two base models, which is just where the pistons attach to the model. And then we have the two pieces of the piston, the long rod part and the sheath where the rod actually goes into. And they all come together pretty straightforwardly. So we're actually going to create an armature to uh, actually animate this. So as we move the two base pieces, the actual piston parts will actually uh, actuate the way you expect them to. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the first thing we want to do is we want to do shift A and we're going to add a single bone armature just like that. So now we have an armature to work with and since we actually want to see what we're doing we're going to go into viewport display and do in front. That way the bone is always going to be drawn on the screen no matter where it is in our scene or what might it uh, be obstructing. So let's go ahead and hop into edit mode here and we're just going to start uh, extruding the bone here and actually moving it into place so we can actually start rigging. So we're going to do that. So this bone is going to be for this bottom base plate here. We're going to press E and extrude another bone up here for the second base plate. And then what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and just duplicate this bone here. And we're going to use this for the sheath part of the piston. So we're going to try and line that up to the best of our ability. It doesn't have to be too exact here. We're going to shift D again and we're going to rotate 180 on the X axis. Oop, that's not what we want to do. Oh, why isn't that working? Anyway, it doesn't matter too much here. So let's go ahead and just rotate it this way. Sometimes Blender is weird with rotations, especially whenever you're working in different object spaces, but this shouldn't be too big of a deal. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. So now we have four bones, each one for uh, each of our four separate objects. Now we need to make sure that they are parented correctly. So we're going to do shift here. We're going to shift here and we're going to do control P to parent. And we want to keep the offset. There we go. So now whenever this bone moves, this bone is going to move proportionally as if it was attached. And you can see that dotted line there, meaning once this is attached, it's going to move as expected. And this one is already parented to this bone down here. So that should be fine. And there we go. So that is our armature go ahead and constructed. And now we can start working on actually attaching the objects to those bones so that when we actually move these bones, the objects will move as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on attaching our objects to our armature. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to attach these base plates to the armature so that way when the bones move, the base plates move. So we're going to select our bottom base plate here and then we're going to shift select the armature. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into pose mode. Now the reason we want to go into pose mode is we want to make sure that we're attaching this base plate to only one bone. If we just try to uh, parent it to the entire armature itself, we're going to get some weird deformations as it's going to try and deform to each one of these bones. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that only one bone is selected, this bottom bone down here, and then we want to control P to parent, and we want to go with just the bone, just like that. And so what that's going to do is now that we're in pose mode, whenever we rotate this, you can see that the entire base plate moves as well. Now you'll notice that all the other bones move well. That's because this is going to be a master bone that controls everything. So everything is going to move with this one bone. So let's go ahead and do that with the other objects. Go back into object mode. Select this other base plate. Shift select the armature. Go into pose mode. Make sure that this bone is selected for this base plate. Control P bone, and then rotate it just to make sure. So there you can see the bone is now moving with the base plate, just as we expected to. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the sheath here. Go back into object mode, select the rod part of the piston, just select the armature, pose mode, select the appropriate bone, and just like that. And there we have it. So now all of our objects are appropriately bound to the bones that are supposed to control them. So making progress. 
So now that we actually have the armature all set up and the objects are appropriately parented, we need to go ahead and start adding the ability for whenever we move the base plates, the pistons move appropriately. And we can do this using bone constraints. Now, bone constraints in Blender are really, really useful. They're used all the time in animation for different things. Uh, this is how you get inverse kinematics. So whenever you move one part of the leg, the entire leg moves. Uh, you can do uh, look to. So if you want to actually control where a particular bone is looking towards, if you want to control how one boom bone moves relative to another bone you do all of that through bone constraints and luckily we'll be able to get this piston effect using the look to constraints so what we want to do is first we're going to select the bone that controls the piston rod here and we're going to go to the bone constraints menu make sure you're in pose mode whenever you do this otherwise this menu option might not show up and once you actually are in this menu you want to add a bone constraint and you want the track to constraint so the track two is what we're going to use to actually force the bone to look towards a particular spot in our scene. And first thing we need to do is we need to select our target. Now for us, our target is going to be our armature. So what you can do is you can take this little eyedropper here and just select the armature either here or up in the menu. Either one works. And that is going to give us a second option, which is to track to a particular bone. Now, it's good practice to actually name the bones as you're making them. I didn't do that for this scene. That was kind of an oversight on my part, but it's real simple to see what the bones names are. Just select the bone and you can see the name up here. So the bone for the sheath is actually going to be bone 002. So back to bone 003, which is our rod bone. We're going to go ahead and select the bone as bone 002. So what this is saying is we're saying there's an object on an armature that we want to track and that object is bone 002. Now, Blender can be kind of weird with object spaces. And you can see here, once we actually put in the options, it's stuck straight up into the air. Uh, that's not exactly what we want. So if you get this, you need to kind of experiment with the track axis and the up axis to make sure that it's pointing in the right direction. And I believe, yes. So let me just make sure those are the right settings. Nope, that's not the right settings. There we go. So for this particular armature, the correct settings for the track axis is Y and the up axis is going to be X. Uh, this is really something you need to just kind of experiment with until you get the right results. But as you can see here, if we select the sheath part of the piston and we rotate it on the X axis, you can see that our object is properly tracking to it. Now, you may be asking yourself, how do we know what part of the bone it's actually tracking towards? And that comes from this head tail option here. So right now I have it set to one, which means that it's tracking the head portion of the model, which is this portion here. So wherever this little ball here is pointing, that's where the bone is going to point towards. So, but if we change it to say 0.5, now it's tracking somewhere in the middle of the bone. Exactly, exactly in the middle, excuse me. And if we set it to zero, now it's always going to be tracking at the base of the bone. So what that means is whenever we rotate this base here and the bone starts moving, it's always going to be tracking to the bottom part of that bone, which is exactly what we need for this piston rig. And so now what we can do is we can replicate the entire process for the sheath part. So add a constraint, track two, set the target to armature, bone zero, zero, three this time. There we go. Play around with the settings. Should be close to the same. And there we go. And just like that, using the bone constraints, we now have a pretty good piston rig. Both parts of the piston are now actively tracking towards each other. And as the base plates move, you can see that it looks like the piston is actually actuating uh, appropriately, which is great. That's exactly what we wanted. And so there's a lot more you can do with bone constraints for if we wanted to take this to the next level, we could actually add a constraint to this base plate here, which is the, where is it? Ah, here it is. The limit rotation constraint. So if we wanted to limit the way that this bone rotated, cause like without this constraint, the bone can rotate in any direction, which obviously doesn't really make sense for a hinge joint uh, mechanical part like this. So if we add a limit rotation one and we set the limit to X, Oops, not X, we want to limit the other axis, excuse me. So there we go. So we've limited the other axes, basically locking into place. So now it can't rotate on the Y axis and it can't rotate on its Z axis, but it can rotate freely on its X axis, which makes it look much more piston-like. It makes it a lot easier to work with because now there's no way we can accidentally rotate it this way or this way. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you build a really basic piston rig in Blender. 
Now all we have to do is build the rest of it. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you learned something during this video. If you did and you have some spare time, maybe check out this other video from my channel. Hope to see you there. So if we go ahead and set this all the way to one, it doesn't do anything.